Welcome to the Western History Association's 2020 Presidential Plenary Session. Before I introduce the session, I'd like to offer my thanks to our wonderful program committee, co-chaired by Liesl Carr Childers, Laurie Flores, and Amy Lone Tree. Thanks to their work and the work of the entire program committee, this, our first ever digital WHA meeting, actually features the largest number of program participants in the organization's history. I'm so grateful to our outstanding group of panelists, Kathleen Cahill, Erin Cole, Deborah Kang, Erica Perez, Josh Reed, and Carl Jacoby. Thank you for your kindness in agreeing to serve as live panelists and moderators of this digital session. I'd also like to offer a special thank you to Liesl for helping me to reimagine what this signature session could be and how it could build on and from the established WHA plenary format. Liesl and I talked about what the WHA had evolved into, its growing diversity, its inclusiveness, and its increasingly unhierarchical structure. Those are the qualities and characteristics we wanted to highlight and celebrate. Well before we reconfigured the live Albuquerque conference into an online venue, we planned a different kind of plenary session in celebration of our 60th anniversary. We wanted to capture the voices of a wide variety of WHA members across the various subfields, positions, and other demographics that comprise the association. We asked members in two major categories, as established scholars, those who built or are now building careers in the field, and emerging scholars, those recent graduates from 2017 to 2020, to participate. We asked them to answer questions about the importance of Western history and the WHA to them and the development of their careers. We asked them what advice they would give to their younger selves and where they think the WHA is headed in the future. So many of those members we invited responded. Some discussed our questions conceptually. Some told specific stories about their experiences and some offered a vision for the WHA's future. But several common themes emerged intertwining the field of Western history and the WHA. The first theme centers on the community of scholars who convene at the WHA every year to talk about the communities that comprise the place we call the American West. The second theme focuses on the region as home to a diverse array of peoples and the WHA as a home to explore and discuss the various histories that comprise the region's past. The third and fourth themes explore the meaningful and lasting connections and friendships of WHA members to each other across time and space and the ways in which those connections support generations of scholars through mentorship. Finally, this endeavor has highlighted, highlighted the dedication members have to the future of the field of Western history and to the organization that supports its study. As you listen to the voices of WHA members throughout this video compilation, consider your community, your connections, and your vision for the field and the organization in the next 60 years. We begin the compilation with the organization's mission, which provides the guiding elements for how we view the field of Western history and how the WHA operates as an organization. The Western History Association. History Association. History History Association. History Association. History Association. History Association. History Association strives to be a congenial home for the study and teaching of all aspects of North American Wests, frontiers, homelands, and borderlands. Our mission is to cultivate the broadest appreciation of this diverse history. To accomplish this mission, we enable collaborations among peoples, institutions, and organizations devoted to the study of Western history. We conduct an annual meeting at which scholars and other professionals join students and other lay people to share their research, to exchange ideas, and to develop programs that facilitate further study of the North American West publish a journal that employs rigorous peer review to identify, improve, and distribute original scholarship. And we promote public education through active involvement with teachers, museums, libraries, and other venues. The Western History Association is like our neighborhood within the landscape of history associations. It's our community. It's where we live intellectually. It's also the region we study. The West is its own community, its own place. To convene at the WHA is to be part of that community. We conduct an annual meeting in which scholars and other professionals join students and lay people to share their research, to exchange ideas, and to develop programs that facilitate further study of the North American West. 
In doing so, we continue to build and sustain both our intellectual and our regional community. Here's how participants described our community and its importance. If I had to choose one thing that I love most about the WHA, I think it would be that we can have an intellectually intense, heated debate about one thing in one moment and then come together later over a beverage or a meal and have warm conversation and enjoy each other's company later in the day. In that vein, if I was thinking about something to tell my younger self about my relationship to the WHA, it would be not to underestimate the value of the relationships that I have forged in this organization. There were intimidating people everywhere. I remember an amazing paper by Marsha Weisiger, and I remember an amazing commentary on that paper by Phil DeLoria, but I did not feel like I did not belong, even though I was surrounded by intimidating intellects. And as I started going to sessions, I remember sitting in the back of those rooms and just being so excited to hear other people talking about all of these topics that I was interested in and that I've been reading in books. And then at that same conference, I also um, began this process that I think was really a hallmark of my early years in the WHA of getting to put faces um, with the names of these famous scholars who I've been reading who had, and who had been influencing me. You know, it's really meant a lot to me to take part in the organization now in a different capacity um, and see the way in which the organization is working to address issues of um, diversity and um, racism throughout, uh, throughout the, um, the organization and the larger society as well. It wasn't until 1989 that I attended my first conference, which was then in Tacoma. That was a couple months after I started my first tenure track job. So I was new to the profession. I had nary a publication to my name and uh, I didn't know anyone. But what struck me then is something that has stuck with me ever since. And that is the uh, approachability, the openness, and the kindness of so many people in the organization, including back in 1989, people whose work I had recently read, luminaries in the field, officials in the organization. I first attended the WHA in 2012 in Denver. I was a high school teacher at the time, and it was immediately apparent that there was something different about the WHA. As a K-12 educator, I felt valued, I felt listened to, I felt engaged, I felt an equal participant in working to tell the diverse history of the North American West in ways that were just exciting, to be honest. I came to my first WHA conference straight out of teaching high school, and I was so nervous that nobody would take me seriously as a scholar. Um, but instead, I was embraced, um, I was treated as an equal, and I found friends and mentors who were just as excited about asking the hard questions about our history that I was. WHA is one of the few conferences that I attend where I've seen that kind of generosity of spirit, but also a real care and concern about the community. The reasons why I like to attend the Western History Association conference and be a part of the WHA is because it allows me as a Chicana and Chicano historian to understand the intersections of my field with those of other fields that make up Western history, such as Native American, Asian American, and African American history. Is that it's been an organization and a community that I've always felt welcomed in, respected in, and I felt that I could continually grow up and grow into the organization over time. I started participating as a graduate student and felt really lucky that I could not only present my own work and get feedback on it from people I admired, but could actually meet and eventually become peers with scholars I admired for a really long time. I was drawn to Western history through the works of Quintard Taylor, Kenneth Hamilton, and Nell Painter. After finding Blackdom's decade of lost history, Western history provided tools for a dynamic telling of the Blackdomite story during the Roaring Twenties in the American West. With a career in Western history, my work would help others indulge in the significant striving of Black people in the West. When I was in grad school, and even in my first few years as an assistant professor, I guess I never really saw the WHA as a place for me as a Native scholar or as a Native studies scholar. But it's just been really incredible to see the depth and breadth of Indigenous history that's not only welcomed at WHA, but celebrated. I think I appreciate most 
that WHA is a space where Native history remains an integral part to our understanding of the history of the American West. WHA, in a lot of ways, is responsible for helping me find an intellectual home in Western history. What I mean by that is that WHA leaders and members have nurtured me as a researcher and as a teacher. Uh, workshops at the annual meeting have connected me to archives and helped me improve my elevator pitch, for example, and I've always been able to count on the Graduate Student Caucus to represent my interests. Uh, I've also found tremendous community at WHA. The Coalition for Western Women's History, for example, has connected me to excellent colleagues and also longtime mentors and friends. Over time, the WHA has become a productive and more diverse space, especially for sharing and talking about Indigenous histories. If anything, the Western has emerged as one of the key spaces for Indigenous history, especially as it's become more welcoming to community scholars from Native nations. The WHA still remains one of the, the smaller, uh, the most diverse, inclusive, friendly conferences that I regularly attend. And I truly don't think I'd be where I am as a scholar and in my career without the support of the WHA and the friendships that I've made through the organization. It's also an incredibly family-friendly place. If you've gone for a long time, you know that in addition to attending while I was pregnant, I brought a two-year-old and my mother to Oklahoma City. I brought a newborn in 2015 all the way across the country to Seattle. Sorry, he wasn't a newborn, he was about seven months old. And he attended meetings and panels in cribs and high chairs and strollers. And, um, and for Native American and Indigenous scholars, the WHA has really, um, it's helped me to connect with Native scholars from all over the country who I never would have met otherwise. And I'm so grateful to know them, to continue to work with them in other ways, whether it's uh, working on a edited volume, contributing chapters, or just talking and sharing. Things that I value about the most about the organization are its energy and its openness. Um, the WHA has a really good energy for being a conference, especially the last couple of years when we've been bringing in a lot of more new people, a lot new, more new voices. Um, it's like, it's something I look forward to every year, not just, not just for the chance to see new friends, figure out what books I want to buy, but just kind of like seeing people talk about new ideas and think about new ways to kind of interpret and kind of interrogate this idea of the West is in incredibly gratifying. I always enjoy going to the Western History Association meetings. I find them valuable uh, because they help to keep me aware of the research that my colleagues are doing on various subjects to do with the North American West. I, I learn new things about different aspects of Western history from what my colleagues are studying and sharing at conferences that I might not have the opportunity to learn about in my day-to-day -day research. I was, when I was first came to the, to the WHA I was, as a graduate student, and in my program, Western history was pretty, was rather peripheral to the program. There wasn't a lot of people who did Western history. Uh, and so my earliest academic homes were in communities and conferences where Western history was always peripheral. But when I went to my first WHA, I found a really fun, engaging, and exciting community of scholars who were interested in the questions that I was interested in. I don't think it's a coincidence that my first time at the WHA was also my first time participating in a really innovative, fun, and interesting uh, panel format, which was a lightning roundtable. Um, I was participating with a lot of my colleagues who were in the same edited collection as myself called Civil War West, and then also folks contributing to Empire of Liberty. And it was just a really amazing way to talk about our projects, um, to get really good feedback, and have a really good conversation. The most valuable contribution of the Western History Association is being able to interact with a community of scholars who are interested in learning more about the American West, its lands, its cultures, its past, and its present. Scholarly dialogues in which I engaged with fellow members of the Western History Association have contributed significantly to my professional and personal growth and has provided me with a deeper understanding 
of the American West. And I rely on WHA and the contacts that I have made over the years and continue to make through this organization that helps me and the journal and my job bring history to people uh, across Arizona, across the United States, and to the scholars of WHA. Uh, for being somebody in exile here in New England, uh, it's a time that I can get back to the American West and talk to people who actually understand the issues around the American West, uh, talk about aridity, talk about Native Americans, talk about the border, talk about all these critical issues in America that people in the East so often don't talk about. The most important thing to me about the WHA has been community the community of scholars who are interested in the same region, even while they may be interested in very different processes, times, and specific places. And I really think that's the strength of the history of the U.S. West. We're a field that's able to cross boundaries between peoples, between places, and the so-called divide between the public and the academy. I always look forward to coming to the Western History Association conferences because it's such a lively place for intellectual exchange. And this is where I meet my colleagues year after year to debate, to engage, to be challenged, and to think critically about the diverse peoples that lived in the American West. Um, it's an organization that is willing to take risks, that is willing to do the hard work of self-examination, um, and is willing to experiment with new ideas uh, to make the organization a better place and a more inviting and inclusive uh, place. And I, I really admire that. It's not easy work, and it's, it takes a lot of guts. And I'm bringing that love of the American West to this interdisciplinary project that is both history and art. And it's one of the things I love about Western history is that it allows me the ability to express all aspects of my intellect and creative abilities within the framework of Western American history. There was this one moment when I stood in the middle of the exhibits hall and I was just completely frozen in time and sort of dumbfounded. I was surrounded by scholars who I knew I had read their books, uh, new people, editors, and all kinds of people who seemed to know each other. And I just sort of felt like this world was revolving around me. I saw joy on people's faces and camaraderie and energy. And I thought to myself at the time, Elaine, you have to find a way to come back to the WHA every year. The Western History Association is also the intellectual home for Western history. The organization means to be congenial home for the study and teaching of all aspects of North American West, frontiers, homelands, and borderlands. Congenial home for the study and teaching of all aspects of North American West, frontiers, homelands, and borderlands. But home has a deeper meaning. The West is home to diverse peoples, including us, whether physically or emotionally. We study this homeland. In summation of the conference, I wrote, I much enjoyed this conference, especially yesterday. It was nice meeting these important people and chatting with them. I just can't say enough. And I can't say enough in the short time I have about how meaningful the WHA has been to me. I consider it my intellectual home in the historical profession. And so if I had one thing to tell my younger self about the importance of the WHA, to my career going forward, um, it would be to not be afraid. Don't be afraid. You might be the only person there from your program, but you're going to be welcomed in and you're going to find a place. I've enjoyed the Indian Scholars Lunch um, and the ways that the Western has really embraced Native history um, over the years. That feels like a really positive and good change. It's made the Western feel something like a, a bit of a home, you know, for me and I know for, for many others. Um, as a person who teaches the West in the Midwest, I was in Michigan for a number of years and now I'm on the East Coast. Um, but I grew up in Colorado and I've always thought of myself as a Westerner, a Western person. Uh, it's always been great to have the WHA as a kind of anchor, a little bit of a lifeline, you know, back to the West. I think if I had to choose one thing that was most intriguing about the history of the American West, it would be that you can't put it in a box. It allows for the messiness that is the field of history. You can't draw boundaries around the geography. You can't say who should or should not be included. 
And I think for that reason, so many other subfields of history and so many other organizations have looked to the WHA and looked to the field of Western history as an example of what could be. And they have asked for our advice on how they can improve their own organizations. You know, just down the hill here, I got blood buried in a graveyard. Um, and so I care really deeply about this place and this region. And the Western is full of people who care deeply about this place and this region and all of its different stripes and colors. So yeah, that's why I study this place. I really found an intellectual home at the WHA. Um, like so many of us, I grew up with settler narratives of the U.S. West, and coming here, I've been exposed to an entire new narrative framing for everything that I thought I already knew. Um, centering Native stories, uh, centering Native methodologies and epistemologies in our inquiry. Um, I found a community of scholars who are eager to ask these hard questions and to rewrite what we think we already know, and I'm just so pleased to be a part of it and honored to, to share in this journey. So the Western History Association for me has always represented in some ways a hub, an opportunity for scholars of indigenous history to come together and vision for the future. And it is my hope that the organization will continue to provide those opportunities for Native American scholars. The WHA is one of my two intellectual homes. The other is the Native American and Indigenous Studies Association. The WHA has provided a supportive and invigorating environment for me as a scholar for the last 16 years. Mentorships, research collaborations, speaking invitations, and publication offers have all come from various WHA interactions. It has been a really convivial, intellectually engaging, and really wonderful environment uh, in which to do my work in uh, Civil War and environmental history. It was one of the first conferences I'd ever been to where I really felt like this was a home for me. And it's important to keep that mission alive as we go through and support our graduate students. And the WHA is my home base. If I could go back and tell little baby historian Wingo anything, it would be that there's nothing that the WHA doesn't offer. There's space for grad students, public historians, both professors and practitioners, digital historians, K through 12 educators, indigenous studies, women's history, the history of race and ethnicity. And each one of those groups is so open and inviting and enthusiastic. And I've been a member of the WHA since 1996. Why? It's because the WHA is home. It's an intellectual home. It's a place where I learn more about stories that really matter. It's a place where I'm consistently and constantly challenged in new ways. It's also a professional home. It's a place where I find collegiality and friendship, as well as crucial advice and absolutely necessary guidance from colleagues, junior and senior alike. The WHA, for me at least, is home. Western History Association as a congenial home for the study of the West has fostered deep and abiding friendships among members. We enable collaborations among peoples, institutions, and organizations devoted to the study of Western history. And this effort has led to a dense network of relationships between historians across the country. For me, the Western History Association in the more than 30 years I've participated in it has been one of the greatest gifts I could imagine. It's brought me intellectual excitement, professional satisfaction, but more than anything else, the joy of friendship. And reflecting back in the last six years of my involvement within the organization, I have nothing but gratitude to the friends that I have made, to the historians, and to the scholars that have guided me along the way, especially those involved in the Coalition for Western Women's History. For me, the WHA has been valuable from early on in my graduate career. It was one of the first conferences I went to, one of the first conferences I presented at. And outside of networking with scholars who are interested in the diversity of the American West, more importantly, it's provided me with lasting friendships and, um, and professional connections that have really um, shaped who I am as a scholar. As I went on in my career, the WHA became a place where I got together with other members of what I think of my Western history cohort. People 
who were usually around the, sort of the same stage in their careers as I was, who were working on similar topics or who I'd gotten to know in archives or graduate school or in fellowships. And um, they really became in many ways my most important peer group. And so the WHA became a time of year when we could all get together and um, offer each other encouragement and support and share our work. And and I'm so glad I found ways to return to the WHA, S becoming an active member of the organization um, has been very valuable to me and I have become connected with incredible colleagues and scholars and very dear friends. Uh, it's a place for me to see old friends, it's a place for me to make new friends. It's a place where, uh, you know, new scholars can introduce themselves to established scholars and be welcome. These friendships are often created out of the mentorship Western History Association members offer each other, whether graduate student or established scholar, university-based professor or public historian. We work to cultivate the broadest appreciation of this diverse history. To cultivate the broadest possible appreciation of this diverse history. Cultivate the broadest appreciation of this diverse history. And we do this across generations. Uh, I've been fortunate to launch a couple of projects through papers that I've given at the WHA and given, gotten great feedback you know, from those things. And I've been lucky to be on the other side as well, to be a commentator on many, many panels you know, over the years, learning things from all the different folks uh, who come to the WHA. I've always appreciated that part of it. I joined the WHA back uh, my first year of being a master's student and the thing I found beneficial back then and the thing I think continues today is the fact that graduate students and faculty at all stages of their career are really able to work together and have conversations about the field. Many of us know how important mentorship is for academic success, however that is defined by the student. And so a valuable lesson that I have learned over my years in graduate training is to give back to the communities that we are sought to serve. Those are the students. And so that is my goal and my dreams for after I'm done with my postdoctoral fellowship at Tulane University. All of you, the collective membership of the WHA have played an important role in helping early career scholars like me find their footing as professionals, regardless of where they teach or how they engage with the public through initiatives like the Graduate Student Prize, the Graduate Student Caucus, and just encouraging us to present at annual conferences, I've been able to test my research and receive critical feedback on those thoughts while being exposed to new ideas to the papers of the Western History Quarterly and conference presentations. Through the WHA, I've had some wonderful mentors. I'm going to specifically name Betsy Jameson and Bill Swaggerty. Um, people who have helped guide me through my career. And in the case of Betsy, she began as a mentor, but over the years she's become a friend. And I so cherish those professional relationships and those professional friendships that I developed in the WHA. Contributions that Wazia Tween has made to our field. She first started presenting on her views on the Dakota oral tradition at the Western History Association. And at that point in time, um, oral history as method um, was still in question in our field, but she made really important interventions. And now, as we know, it is commonplace for many um, sessions to focus on Indigenous oral history. I enjoy meeting my colleagues at the conference, and uh, I also uh, have had the opportunity to um, read uh, the works of several of my colleagues that attend the conference and some of these colleagues I have now kept in touch with and we have uh, found opportunities to put together conference panels and other activities which have been professionally enriching and meaningful to my growth as a historian. The last thing that I want to say is that I would totally be remiss without talking about the many incredible mentoring relationships I've been a part of there. And the one that probably deserves the biggest shout out is Steve Aaron, who was actually my undergraduate thesis advisor at Princeton a long, long time ago, a past that many people don't know about or remember. I wish I had spent more time trying to learn from really the vast array of scholars in 
associated with Western History Association. I've learned from many of them and many of them have become dear friends, but there's so much rich work going on in Western history. So where is the Western History Association going in its next 60 years? How will we achieve? Study and teaching of all aspects of the North American West, frontiers, homelands, and borderlands. We all have ideas about where to go next. I've always appreciated how open the WHA is to public history and to public historians. And I hope that both will play an even stronger role in the future WHA as we all work toward crafting more inclusive, collaborative narratives that are not just about the West, but that are also made with and for Westerners. I look forward to building this new WHA with all of you. Why study the West? There's a lot of reasons, but here are two. The first is that as these past few months of wildfires have shown us, the West is profoundly affected by the ongoing climate crisis. And we need historians not just to describe the floods and blizzards and droughts that we'll see over the next several decades, but also to interpret this crisis, to explain to audiences what these phenomena mean, where they came from, and how we can stop or mitigate the next ones. And we're helped in that because the West is weird. Uh, it is an enormous storehouse of human and cultural and environmental diversity. And within that, within all of the many stories that make up the history of the North American West, are visions of alternative futures, paths not pursued, or ways that people lived that might have bearing or relevance on how we're trying to live now. So when looking back into the history of the West, the ways that people have lived with their environments and with each other, we can better understand not only our shared present, but also work to shape our common future. We have to work harder to try to tell the full story of Western history and to acknowledge the way that power, especially the power of settler colonialism, has really coursed through this field and in some ways continues to dominate the narrative of Western history. When I think about where the WHA is going for the future, I think about the national conversation that we find ourselves in, particularly since the George Floyd protests and controversy over monuments and how we remember our history in public spaces. And a lot of that discussion from the 1619 Project to Columbus Day and all the rest focuses on the colonial period and the revolutionary period. But the U.S. West holds a unique place in American national identity. And that conversation is coming for our field. And I'm so excited to see where we take it. Um, we teach a history where we think we know the narratives and we scratch the surface and we find that we don't really know them at all. It involves more people, it involves people with different identities. Uh, the entire narrative framing can shift and change how we understand this field. And I really look forward to continuing with the WHA and this community of scholars and um, continuing to make this a space that is welcoming to scholars from all backgrounds, um, scholars of all identities, and to asking the hard questions about the history of the U.S. West together. I find most engaging the continued conversations on gender, race and ethnicity, colonialism, and imperialism as it relates to the history of the American West and the history of the United States. The advice that I would give people, like give people, younger people about being involved with the WHA is if you don't feel the WHA has room for you, make it make the WHA make room for you. Submit panels, be on committees. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that one of the reasons that it's fairly it's it's fairly welcoming is there's been a lot of people who've made welcoming be an important part of their work within the within the institution. Take full advantage of the organization. Take full advantage of the conference and what it can offer. I think the WHA every year becomes more and more diverse, more and more mindful of itself and its operations and who uh, it should be including and which directions in Western history it should be. The WHA has struggled and had its moments, but I think we've grown in so many ways and we've really embraced the messiness. We've really embraced diversity. We've really embraced so many things. And I think that is a reflection of the field itself. And I'm so incredibly honored to be a person who studies the field and who is a member of this organization. 
As for the field of Western history, I think it's moving in lots of exciting new directions, making really important connections across a variety of issues relating to, to race, gender, to sexuality, the environment, uh, immigration and borders, empire. It's all there. I know better than to make predictions about the future, but since we had nearly 100 years debating Frederick Jackson Turner, I put my money on the fact that we're going to have at least 100 years of new Western history. And I'm particularly excited about the scholarship that's relating the history of the American West to other regions nearby, whether that's the U.S. South, Mexico, the Pacific, or Kansas. And the Western History Association is important to me because of our field's critical attention to environmental history, histories of the working class, indigenous and Latinx history, and histories of women, gender, and sexuality. Uh, I believe that the Western has a tremendous role to play in using our knowledge about resource extraction, racism, and economic inequality to support collective work against climate change and towards greater environmental justice and racial justice. Um, I'd love to see Western histo history continue to update our old Western history stories of the 19th century, making those sort of classic stories more diverse with new perspectives. Um, and as for the WHA going forward, I anticipate that we will become even more diverse uh, while maintaining our commitment to that open conversation among all of our members. I see the field of Western history continuously growing with the questions, with the historical questions we dare to ask. We know, we are now learning that through in my own field and my own interests, such as Latinas and Chicanas in American politics, how important the broad American West has been to shaping national discussions, political debates at the national level. And now we're learning how important Chicanas have been shaping politics, not only at the local and state level, but also at the national level throughout history. So I see the field of American history growing with the historical questions we dare to ask. As an Inupiaq historian, <laughs> With my own contributions to the field, I see the WHA hopefully going north to the Arctic and to Alaska. Western history has been a godsend. As the digital frontier has descended upon us, I draw encouragement, indulging in the stories of black homesteaders. If I could go back to in time as a student, I would have paid more attention to participating in conferences. The 2020 WHA platform has held space for the telling of a new narrative of Blackton Oil Company in its centennial. My, I want to tell my younger self there is life in the second half of your journey through the century. I am now working on a mission to promote disability history scholarship at the WHA. I have always felt welcomed, and now with the WH Western History Association support, I am establishing a Disability History Scholar Award. The WHA has been changing and growing over um, the last few years, especially at least since I've been in, and it really is devoted and committed to looking at the spectrum of histories in the American West. And as a Californian, doing Western history for me kind of seems like coming home. And so the WHA feels like somewhere where I can kind of have that academic home. And um, for me, Western history is also really important because in some ways it is unique and it is um, uh, very kind of central to understanding what it is to live in the West. But in many other ways, Western history is sort of a microcosm of the rest of the country and really is representative of what's happening throughout the United States. And it's just a different way of looking at it. It's my hope that this organization continues to strengthen its commitment to inclusive truth telling so that scholars, regardless of their race, their gender identity, their professional affiliation, their religion, any aspect of their background, regardless of these factors, they feel as supported as I have been. We know that the American West is a massively diverse place, the stories that are still being undertold. To flourish early career scholars need guides and mentors who can help them navigate institutions, organizations, and create supportive networks. There is more work to be done here, and I want to help clear a space where these new histories and scholars of the West can thrive. Finally, what I think is the most essential job that we can have as scholars is that as educators. 
we must recognize the wonderful work that our colleagues are conducting by incorporating that research into our classes so that this organization can help open minds, those minds that we reach as wide as the Western skies under which we teach. The Western History Association is proof that not just diversity, but real inclusion is possible in a historical organization. They've changed with the times, evolved, listened to feedback, and welcomed scholars like me whose work deals with the diverse peoples who made North American history. I think we have an important foundation in the ways we've been democratizing our organization, uh, our field, and our profession. Uh, I think one way we've been doing that is by supporting graduate students. I know it's something I've benefited from and has uh, caused me to be more invested in the WHA. Uh, I also think we have some great mechanisms in place uh, being led by some of our best colleagues. Uh, so WHA CARES, CRA, and CWWH are great parts of the WHA that I think we all need to invest in more uh, as we move forward in our careers and it's something I am really planning on doing, whether it's participating directly in these uh, coalitions or committees uh, or supporting their initiatives uh, and calls for action. So I hope you'll join me in the years to come. I plan to be in the WHA for a long time, uh, especially if they keep giving us tote bags. Uh, and in this capacity, I look forward to making other people feel at home in Western history. I would tell myself to not take a moment of that face-to-face -face interaction for granted. Thanks to David Rebell for his confidence in the program committee's vision for this video. Thanks to my program co-chairs, Amy Lone Tree and Lori Flores for supporting this project and to the 2020 program committee for all their hard work. Thanks to Mary Mendoza and the Committee on Race in the American West for their support. Thanks to Elaine Nelson and the WHA office for providing valuable assistance all along the way. Thanks to Nate and Lindsay Marshall, without whom this video would never have been made. And finally, thanks to all our fur historians who made this endeavor a little more challenging. As Richard White said, this is not as easy as it seems. This is not as easy as it seems. Hi, I'm Kathleen Cahill, professor of history at Penn State University and longtime WHA member. This is Pina, who is being very loud <laughs> during previous filmings. <laughs>